Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Today I'm here to share with you day four of hashtag art journal habit 2019. This is a month long daily art journaling challenge with prompts. You saw the prompts at the beginning. The prompt for today, Monday, November 4th, is shop. And I thought about a lot of different things when I heard that prompt shop. I mean, it could be so many different things, but what I really was thinking about was um, when I took this trip, I mean, it's it's been like a year ago at least now, to Scotland and Ireland with my friends and how different it was than what I'm used to. The place that I live in the United States, I live in a, a neighborhood with a lot of houses that look similar or the same. I mean, there's a lot of different ones, but everything looks pretty the same. And then if you wanna go get some groceries or something, you drive and you go to a large grocery store or you go to Walmart that has all kinds of clothing and you know things for your car and craft supplies and groceries. You go to kind of like a mall type, um, a mall is like a strip thing you know, with these large stores. And in all the places that we stayed, we stayed in the cities and um, we stayed in these little things called apartment hotels in both Edinburgh and um, Dublin. And we, so we were kind of like downtown. And then we also got on a lot of buses and went on bus tours to different places. And every place that I saw had shops that were small, close together, and on the street. Every place that we ate, we when we went to go eat, we'd walk down the street and go to a pub or something. There wasn't a standalone restaurant over here, you know, this a big restaurant over here like we're used to. Um, it was different. And I hear people say... I hear my friends from, from other European places say shop instead of store. And I don't know if, if that is just one of those changes of the English language where, you know, things are, are described differently or if a store is actually different than a shop. I don't know. That's an interesting question. But <clears throat> I was just, I was fascinated and delighted we, we'd go we were staying in a, an apartment hotel thing so we'd go get some groceries just down the street to the shop and it was a small place and you know limited supplies probably uh, maybe eight aisles and of course all the food was different than what we're used to because it was different packaging different everything and then oh my gosh I went on hunt for every flavor of Cadbury chocolate because I love Cadbury chocolate, but here in the United States, you can get the roast almond, you can get the fruit and nut, and you can get the milk chocolate. Oh, and you can get the caramel. And that's it. That's the only ones we have. And we don't have them in the small bars. We have them in large, larger bars. We don't even have the small bars, but in every shop, they had like 15 different kinds of Cadbury in small bars. So every time I would go in, I'd get a few new ones and and taste them <laughs> to see, um, you know, what they were like. The only one I didn't like was, uh, oh, what's that stuff called? Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight tastes like perfume to me. <laughs> we don't have anything really that's flavored with rose water um, here in the United States. It's not. A popular flavor but I see on British Baking Show that it is something that people use a lot um, in Britain apparently to me it tastes like perfume so I don't I didn't enjoy that one but every other one that I tried was awesome there was ones with crunchy things and just you know all these different things it was just yummy so anyway what I'm creating here with my collage is a row of shops and I don't know what they are they could be anything but um, they, they look different from each other, like maybe they're painted differently or maybe there's different. I saw a lot of beautiful ironwork when I was in Dublin. It was like 
tons of beautiful ironwork everywhere. I took so many pictures. And there was a lot of that on the different shops, especially on the second stories of them. There would be, you know, be some kind of like little balcony railing type thing with ironwork on it or a decoration of some sort. Also some some pressed like plaster, a lot of pressed plaster looking or molded plaster looking decorations. <clears throat> but it was just so interesting to me that you buy everything in a small shop. And maybe out in the suburbs away from the cities, that's not true. Maybe it's more like the United States. I don't know because I didn't really go to the suburbs. We drove through to different places, but we were always going to a place on a bus, you know, going to some touristy thing. And then uh, yesterday I was making pumpkin scones, a uh, copy of the recipe that is at Starbucks. It was like, it was like a copycat recipe I was trying out. They were really good. They got eaten up so fast. They were just like gone in seconds practically. But um, I, then I was talking to my friend and we were talking about these scones that we had when we were in Ireland on the bus. They stopped to get gas, petrol in the bus. And we all got out and went inside the little shop there. And, and it was a bakery. It was a bakery with a gas station. And then also it had part of it was like more like a convenience store um, where you could get, you know, juice and sodas and coffees and that, that type of stuff. But, oh my gosh, the scones were so good. They were so good. They, they weren't as, I don't know, I can't even describe how good they were. <laughs> and I don't know why, why they were different. I can't describe why they were better, but yeah, in a, in a little gas station shop. You'd think, you know, if you're going to get good scones, you should go to a bakery shop, not a gas station. I don't know. It was, <laughs> it was all different and fun and unique and so interesting to travel somewhere that's so completely different from where I am. And when I do my different desert scene type art. I always hear from people from Australia and from, from Britain and from different places saying how they want to visit here because it's so unique and different from what, what they have. And that's how I feel too. I want to go travel to different places. I'd love to go to Australia because I just think it would be fascinating. Their seasons are completely different. So we have win starting up of fall and winter and they're getting hot over there in summer. Yeah, that's what travel is all about, finding out how other people live. And it's even more fascinating to me when I hear from other people all the time in comments and stuff, how different the place that I'm describing is from where they are. So, yeah, I finished up the base uh, designs. Generally, it seemed like the first floor of everything was different, and that was where the shop was. And then... The buildings on top, sometimes there'd be one or two stories on top of the, the bottom shop. And I guess maybe there's apartments up there. I don't know. Obviously, I can't go up there. Maybe, maybe the shop owner lives up there, above their shop. That's a possibility. I know that happens here in the United States in like big, big cities like New York, where there's such limited space and everything's crammed together that someone might live above their shop. But... Um, a novel idea. Where I live, a house is a separate structure. People live in apartments too, but um, it's a it's a place that you are, and it's not in any way associated with a shop. There's not there's not a multi use sort of a thing in most places. I have seen that in different places where there'll be like a shopping center below and then apartments above, but that's that's an unusual thing in the United States, I think. So correct me if I'm wrong. If where you live, that's really common, <laughs> then, then tell me. But every place that I've lived in like uh, five different states, houses are separate from, from stores. Stores are a separate thing and you go to it. So yeah, in restaurants, you go to the restaurant. It's a separate building somewhere else. It's not in any way connected to the houses. 
So I'm now putting on things like windows, doors, chimneys, uh, little roof lines, all that type of thing. Just cutting little pieces of scraps and gluing them on with my Liquitex matte gel medium. Um, this is relaxing to me. This is something that I enjoy doing and it was very early in the morning when I did this. It was like 5 a.m. So <laughs> it's still dark outside and I'm making little shops with little tiny pieces of paper. <laughs> it's just how I roll. I'm not being precise. I'm not measuring. I'm not drawing. I'm just cutting out the little pieces. If they're not perfect, that's fine. It makes it more fun to me. It makes it more whimsical and wonky and fun if things aren't perfect. Um, there's even a little piece of washi tape there that uh, was on an envelope, a manila envelope, and I just cut the envelope with the washi right off and made it part of my little building there on the far right side. So once everything is glued down, I give it a good dry and then I'm starting doing some detailing. I've got my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons. I've also got my Stabilo All pencil. Stabilo All is a, a very highly water reactive, as you can see there, pencil. And I, I want this, there's a street in front of these shops and there's also, of course, a sidewalk. And so I'm just adding some colors and shadowing just to, to make it look like there's a street in the sidewalk there. And then I'm adding some shading around the buildings by just taking the Neo Color 2 and coloring it on my under paper and then picking it up with a water brush. This is a, a brush that has water in the handle, of course. So if I need a little water, I just squeeze my hand and I don't have to go keep dipping in water like a, a regular brush. I really enjoy this type of brush. Um, some people don't, so it's kind of up to you. That process of dipping and and then blotting and then you know back and forth back and forth with when I'm using any type of watercolor product just makes me tired. So I like a, a water tank brush that has water in it. A synthetic bristle doesn't matter. It works great. It's very flexible. I'm not sure what it's made out of. Uh, maybe polyester or something. So then uh, this particular gel print had these lines on it and I wanted to make them softer. So I used white and light blue crayon to go over the lines just to kind of calm them down, especially right where they're connected to the buildings. And then I also took some darker blue and ran around the top of the building to kind of make it stand out more from the background. This is supposed to be the sky and all the little stuff that's on the print already is supposed to be the clouds. There's all or, there's some scribbles and some stenciling on the, the, the background before I even started. So then I took my black Stabilo and added even more shadow up at the top to really break the, the line between the tops of the shops and the the background sky. Then I get out my white and my black fine tip Posca pins and add even more little details. Again, not being careful, not drawing very straight, just doing it quickly um, to make it look more fun and more whimsical and add a little more detail. <coughs> so if you guys haven't joined in this challenge yet, you certainly can. If you're in the Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group, then you can post all your art journal pages in there as you go along. There's um, places for you to post them in there and share what you've done with the prompts. And you can also print out the prompt list from there if, if it's too fast on my video. Um, you can also post your projects anywhere on social media using the hashtag Art Journal Habit 2019. And you can also search for other people's stuff on Instagram or different places that they've used the hashtag. You can find other people's art as well. So that's what hashtags are for. They're a way of cataloging and categorizing something that you can find later with the hashtag. Now I'm adding a little car, just so that you know that's a street. 
little tiny. We saw so many tiny cars. Americans have big fat cars. <laughs> Not so many cute little tiny ones. They're probably much more fuel efficient. When we when we rented a car, um, I had to drive on the wrong side of the road. For me, it was really strange. But it was a car that ran on diesel. And here, only trucks run on diesel. We We have regular unleaded gas and not diesel. So I'm sure it's, and, and the diesel is more expensive, a lot more expensive here than, than regular unleaded. So yeah, that was different. That was backwards from what I saw in Scotland when I was driving to go to my castle. <laughs> Cause you know, I have a castle. <laughs> okay. My family was associated in some way with the castle. Let's put it that way. So then I have this little bucket on my desk that has some loose extra die cut letters and, and letters cut from magazines and stuff. And I, I went through it to see if I could find some words and I mean some letters to make a word. And I ended up finding uh, this one magazine S and then an H-O-P and then I added another S to make it shops and um, that's pretty much the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have don't forgive to forget to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or a question subscribe if you haven't already turn on that notification bell that's really important for YouTube to give me credit for you watching my videos and uh, I don't know why but that it just is also, if this is your last video, could you go click on somebody who has a million subscribers before you turn off YouTube? That's also something that um, I get punished for, for if you go away from YouTube after watching my video. Of course, I, I want you to go make art, so it's kind of a conundrum. And um, yeah, you can pin this on Pinterest if you want to, too. If you've made yourself a little art journaling, you know, uh, pin, Pinterest board. So that's it for me for today. Thanks. Bye-bye.